If you haven't already watched the demonstration, Breaking Functions Apart, watch that first. That's what got us to where we are. Having broken my function apart into a user input function and a worker function, I now want to make that user input function look and feel more like a real PowerShell commandlet. I'd like all of these different versions to work. Here, I'm creating an array of two strings using a comma separated list and piping those strings to get computer info. Here, I'm just piping in a single computer name. Here, I'm retrieving a bunch of computer names from a file, which will be read in as an array of strings, and piping them to get computer info. Here, I'm retrieving a bunch of computer objects from Active Directory, all of them actually. I'm adding a computer name property that's equal to those objects existing name property, and piping that custom object, which has a computer name property, to get computer info. This is asking for pipeline binding by property name, something I'll have to set up. Here I'm just using the function directly, passing a single value to its computer name parameter. I'd also like to be able to access that parameter by using the alias host instead of computer name, because I think it's a little bit more natural for me and the other admins I work with, and I want to be able to pass in multiple values. I'd like to be able to pass in a single value positionally without having to type the parameter name, and I'd like to be able to read in an entire array of computer names from a text file and pass them directly to the computer name parameter. To make all that happen, we're going to have to stop relying on the dollar sign underscore placeholder and instead use something called commandlet binding. That simply means we're going to create a normal parameter block just like we've done in simpler functions, but we're going to attach several attributes to these. So I'm going to start with my string computer name parameter. I've already said I want that to be able to accept one or multiple values, and so I need to make sure I put the two square brackets indicating that this could be an array. Now I want to add some attributes using the parameter keyword. This is only valid if you've specified commandlet binding at the top of your script. I want this to be mandatory. That means if someone tries to run this without specifying a computer name, PowerShell itself will automatically prompt them. I don't need to provide a default here, and I don't need to code for that prompting. We'll ask it to accept input by value from the pipeline. This is a good chance to hop back over into the shell and show you where you'll find the rest of these attributes. Help advanced. Some people call this type of structure a script commandlet, but the official name is an advanced function. So help about functions, advanced, parameters. And you'll start to see all of the different arguments. So here's the position argument, there's the mandatory argument, and there's the value from pipeline and value from pipeline by property name arguments. So let's go ahead and finish those back over in the ISE. Position equals one, value from pipeline equals true value from pipeline by property name equals true. That's a lot to type. You can also provide other attributes that do input validation checking. I don't need to do that, but I do want to specify an alias because I'd like this to be accessible via host as well as computer name. Make sure I get that closing parenthesis in there. At this point, I don't have access to dollar sign underscore anymore. What I'm getting in the process script block is going to always be an array. Sometimes it'll only be an array of one thing. For example, in these instances where I'm piping things, computer name is only going to contain one name at a time within the process script block, but it'll still be in an array of one item because I designated computer name as an array. Here, where I'm using the parameter instead of piping things in, computer name will contain all of the computer names, which could still only be one thing, but they'll be in an array. The process script block will execute once for each piped in object. If I don't pipe in anything, and I use the parameter name instead, then the process script block will execute once. So in here, all I need to do is use a for each construct. I'll 
I'll run through computer name, even if that's only got one thing in it, and pull out each value one at a time and put it in the variable name. Now all I need to do is call my worker computer info with that name. So that worker computer info is only ever being called with one name at a time. What I've created here is a script commandlet, technically an advanced function. It looks, feels, and works to the end user a lot like a real function. I can leave all of these usage examples in here, and I'm going to, because one of the next things that we need to do is add some comment-based help. And that's going to go right here at the top of the function. You can either put this immediately prior to the function keyword, or I like to have it inside. And what I'm actually going to do is create several examples and just keep these ones I've already typed. Just copy those up to the clipboard. Paste them into this comment block. And before each one, I just need to make sure I put that dot example keyword. Remember to run help about comment based help if you'd like a little bit more reminder of some of the other keywords that can be used here. You need to make sure that example keyword gets inserted right before each example so that they'll get numbered correctly. Nope, that's not right. We need it right there. Now if someone asks for help on get computer info and they specify either dash example or dash full, all of those examples will list out too. I could provide other bits of help, a synopsis, description, information about the parameter, and so forth, but this is good enough for now.